Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly and get some sweet perks, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Additionally, this is our 100th audio episode that we've posted on our audio only format on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon. If you're unfamiliar with those, we have links to all of those in our description below. Check them out if you prefer listening to them on the go. We post them simultaneously alongside all of our videos that can go into an audio only format. All right, on with the deck tech. Today I am brewing my first official partner deck with Kodama of the East Tree, partnering up with Livio Oathsworn Sentinel. Starting with Kodama, it is a legendary creature spirit that costs four and two green. It's a six six with reach. And whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. It has partner, and it is going to be partnered with Livio Oathsworn Sentinel. It's a legendary creature human knight that costs one and a white. It's a 2-2. Two -two. It has two abilities. For one and a white, choose another target creature. Its controller may exile it with an Aegis counter on it. And then for two and a white and tapping it, return all exiled cards cards with Aegis counters on them to the battlefield under their owner's controls. This deck is very similar to my Emil the Blessed deck that I built for our jumpstart deck techs. The goal is to capitalize off of a lot of ETB triggers and it's got a splash of combo mixed in there. Kodama's ability is really the crux of the strategy, letting us basically double everything that enters the battlefield. Not like a panharmonicon, but letting us get a, additional things onto the battlefield, just dumping our entire hand. But really, Livio is the perfect match for this because his Oblivion effect lets you exile stuff and let it re-enter the battlefield, triggering Kodama in a new, recurrable way. Let's start by going over the most impactful cards in the deck. The enter the battlefield triggers and the things that synergize with those. These are the ones that are going to break Kodama and Livio, mostly comboing with them, but also giving us a major advantage. Let's start out with Apex Devastator. It's got four cascades on it, it costs 10 mana, so when you cast this with Kodama out, you are getting one permanent from your hand and four spells from your library cast. And the great thing about this is that if you get permanent cards off of the top with any of those cascade triggers, you're going to trigger Kodama again. So cascade is doubly effective and Apex Devastator is perfect for that. Next we have Lurking Predators, which when our opponents cast any spells we get to look at the top of card of our library if it's a creature we put it onto the battlefield otherwise we put it on the bottom of our library this lets us cheat things into play when it's not our turn and will trigger Kodama by getting things off of the top. Next, we have Avenger of Zendikar and Tristani Discordant, both of which will create tokens when they enter the battlefield. That's really the primary purpose of them because those tokens are going to trigger Kodama as well, which means anything with zero converted mana cost you can put onto the battlefield. Now, most of the time, those things are going to be lands. But even just that, if you have a whole bunch of lands in your hand and you play down an Avenger of Zendikar, you get to play all of those lands and get all of your mana back. So that's what I really love about these. Tristani is also great for going up against decks that want to steal a lot of things. It's just good kind of insurance for this creature heavy deck. Next is probably the most powerful card in the deck with Kodama and it's Dual Nature. It's an enchantment for four and two green and it says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, its controller creates a token that's a copy of that. Whenever the creature leaves the battlefield, exile all tokens with the same name as it. And then when Dual Nature leaves the battlefield, exile all tokens created with Dual Nature. So the crux of why this is so good is that those token copies that enter the battlefield whenever one of our creatures enters the battlefield have the same properties as the creature that entered, which means they copy over converted mana cost, which means when Kodama is triggered, you're getting another permanent onto the battlefield than when you started. Now, this can be used to get two more things onto the battlefield. Or if you play a creature from one of Kodama's triggers, it's also going to get triggered off of dual nature, create a token copy, and then that one, since it entered from dual nature's trigger and not Kodama, will trigger Kodama. So you have this cascading effect of 
you just get to dump all of your creatures from your hand onto the battlefield if you play your highest converted mana cost one, which is so good. It's ridiculously powerful to just play all of your creatures in your hand. And, and if you have something that lets you draw cards when you play creatures or creatures that draw you cards when they enter, that's just going to fuel that fire and and let you dump all of them onto the battlefield. Now, not all of the good permanents in this deck are creatures, but there are a lot of them. And putting all of our creatures down all at once is going to feel really good. Dual Nature is also a good enabler for cards like Core Skyfisher. When Core Skyfisher enters, you return a permanent you control to your hand, which means when you bring it out alongside Dual Nature, you're going to get two of those triggers as well as two Kodama triggers. Order the triggers so that Core Skyfisher's copy bounces the original Core Skyfisher back to your hand. When this happens, the token copy is going to get exiled, but it does let you, with that Kodama trigger, play Core Skyfisher again rinse and repeat and you you get infinite enter the battlefield triggers continually bouncing and replaying core sky fisher the same works with felidar guardian and restoration angel both of which will flicker a creature or permanent you control and these are all just generally good cards as well they help with our enter the battlefield strategy to get repeated triggers even if we're not comboing with dual nature regarding payoffs for infinitely bouncing things we have altar of the brood cream of the crop and cathar's crusade altar of the brood will mill all of our opponents out if we have infinite enter the battlefield triggers so that's really nice cream of the crop essentially lets you scry through your entire deck and get impactful cards on top of your library and then if you have something to draw you can draw that card so that's really useful in cycling through your deck and then cathar's crusade with entering infinite times will let you pump up all of your other creatures that you're not caught in a loop plus one plus one every time they enter the battlefield so that's going to give you infinite power and finish off at least one of your opponents while we're on the subject of combos let's talk about our second combo which is with village bell ringer and cryptolith right village bell ringer will untap all of the creatures you control and cryptolith right will let you tap creatures for mana so if you have at least five creatures you can combo this with livio exiling village bell ringer for two mana bringing it back for three mana. When it enters, it will untap Livio and it will untap all of your creatures. So if you tap all of your creatures for mana and then untap them at this point, then you're getting all of that mana back. And if you have at least five creatures that can do this, then you go infinite. Continuing in this category, we have Charming Prince and Conjurer's Closet, which while they won't go infinite, they will give you an additional enter the battlefield trigger from something. And so if you bounce your seven CMC thing and can play a whole bunch of stuff after that with dual natures out, those are going to be really helpful. With Livio especially, Seedborn Muse and Wilderness Reclamation are really good because what you can do is exile things while it's other people's turn. So if you have enough mana to start banking stuff away then on your turn you can just bring them all back and get all of those into the battlefield triggers again and if you have the budget for it which i didn't but i'll mention it here then cloudstone curio would be a great include this combos well with any of our other blink effects it basically turns everything into a core sky fisher except it can't bounce itself it enables us pretty well Moving on to our ramp section, I've actually had to be careful about what I include here. Because of the village bell ringer combo line, having access to a lot of mana dorks is rather helpful. And I'd argue that adding even more mana dorks and making this like a pseudo elf ball deck would be a solid strategy for Kodama Livio to have. So the mana dorks that I've included are Avacyn's Pilgrim, Birds of Paradise, Elvish Mystic, Findhorn Elves, Lanoar Elves, and Wall of Roots. And obviously I have Cryptolith Rite that makes everything into a Birds of Paradise, but these are just helpful for getting us to that 6 CMC to cast Kodama, and maybe if we're lucky and we get a lot of them, we can use them to combo with Village Bell Ringer. Going along with our Mana Dorks, we have Leyline of Abundance and Thousand Year Elixir. Both of these are really good enablers for those. The Leyline letting us tap our creatures for an additional mana, and the Thousand Year Elixir letting us tap them as soon as they enter the battlefield. Thousand Year Elixir is great because when we're bouncing things and exiling things and bringing them back, they're going to have summoning sickness, but having Thousand Year Elixir on the battlefield will help us mitigate those effects. Then we have some Tutor Ramp with Farhaven Elves and Wood Elves letting us find lands from our library. Wood Elves is especially good because those lands come in untapped. And remember, every time a land enters the battlefield, you're triggering Kodama, which means 
you can put another land from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's really, really powerful to have these ramp spells. We also have Kodama's Reach, of course, we're playing a Kodama deck, and Sky Shroud Claim, which are just two generally good sorcery tutor ramps. Sky Shroud Claim really helps to cast on turn four, so we can get to six mana and cast Kodama the next turn. Kodama's Reach, not only flavorful, but having that extra land in your hand, you can immediately play it with Kodama out. We have some mana rocks with Arcane Signet and Soul Ring, easy to cheat out with Kodama if we have it out and we get it in the late game so it's not such a feel bad. We have some white creature spell reduction with Oketra's Monument and it also has the whenever you cast a creature spell put a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield that will trigger Kodama letting you put another land down so it, it adds some additional ramp to our deck if we have those lands in our hand. And then of course we're playing white so we're playing Smothering Tithe and the great thing about Smothering Tithe is that those treasures will also trigger Kodama. And if you have lands in your hand on other people's turns when they're drawing cards and not paying that two mana, you can just put even more lands onto the battlefield and it's, it's even more of a powerhouse in this deck. Card advantage is very, very important to our strategy. As most of our lines involve infinite enter the battlefield triggers and drawing our whole deck is very useful to have. We've put a lot of card draw in here that synergizes well with creatures. This primarily being a creature deck and counting on enter the battlefield triggers from creatures. Plus being able to refill our hand after dumping it is crucial because we want to continue to take advantage of Kodama's ability and if we have an empty hand, we can't really do that. First, we have our enter the battlefield draw effects with Elvish Visionary, Llanowar Visionary, and Wall of Blossoms, all of which will draw us a card when they enter. Llanowar Visionary also being another one of those mana dorks. Regal Force is the best of these enter the battlefield draw effects. It draws at least one card if Regal Force is the only one that's on the battlefield, but most likely you're going to have Kodama as well and a whole bunch of mana dorks. So it's going to continuously draw you a whole bunch of cards. And this is one of the best targets for Livio to continue to exile and bring back to the battlefield. We have some things that trigger off of other things entering the battlefield with Mentor of the Meek, Soul of the Harvest, and Guardian Project. Mentor of the Meek, you have to pay for those cards, but the other two, they will just trigger whenever non-tokens enter the battlefield. Then we have Camaraderie, Shamanic Revelation, and Return of the wild speaker all of which will draw us a whole bunch of cards based on how many creatures we have which we're most likely going to have a bunch of creatures these have always been very very helpful in this deck we have one tutor in this deck eladomri's call and this is really important for the deck because we can find one of those blink or bounce pieces or we can find a token generator whatever we need for the situation that we're in we can find regal force to help us get some more card draw eladomri's call is really important for this deck then we have mind's eye which doesn't need any additional set up on our side we just need some open mana to make sure that we can pay for it when other people draw cards and then we have skull clamp which will help with our token generators and other small things that will die in our last section we're talking about interaction and protection and recursion pieces I've tried to include as many creatures that have entered the battlefield effects as I could in this section because recurring those creatures can be helpful with dealing with large board states. First, we have our enter the battlefield destruction effects with Cavalier of Dawn, Knight of Autumn, and Reclamation Sage. Cavalier of Dawn is an all-star. It lets us destroy non-land permanents, and they just get a measly 3-3 golem in, the, in their place. Very, very helpful to recur multiple times. Knight of Autumn will destroy artifacts or enchantments, but it also has the flexibility to gain us some life. So if we do have a way to bring it in a whole bunch of times, that can help us in a pinch. And then Reclamation Sage is just a good, efficiently costed artifact and enchantment removal. We have some instants with Beast Within and Swords to Plowshares great cards in green and white just in general we have angel of grace which is going to protect our life total if someone is swinging at us and trying to get us down we can flash it in or if it's already on the battlefield we can use livio to make it re-enter the battlefield giving us that protection until the end of that turn as well we have some things to protect our board with avison angel of hope and privileged position Avacyn giving things indestructible, privileged position giving things hexproof. We then have a couple of one-off protect your board effects with Eerie Interlude, Flawless Maneuver, and Veil of Summer. 
Veil of Summer will make everything hexproof, Flawless Maneuver will give everything indestructible, and Area Interlude will make everything leave the battlefield and then bring it back to get a lot of enter the battlefield triggers. This is an all-star with Kodama and definitely worth the include. We have some graveyard recursion with Eternal Witness, letting us get cards back to our hand, just really, really good in green. We have Mother of Runes and Swift Foot Boots that let us protect our commander. And then we have some more graveyard recursion with Karmic Guide and Sun Titan, letting us get creatures or other things that were destroyed back from the graveyard onto the battlefield really, really efficiently, especially when we can recur these multiple times. Quickly going over the mana base, the most important here are Canopy Vista and Temple Garden because they can be tutored while searching for forests. I found that in playtesting, these two lands get onto the battlefield 90% of the time, and, and they're really, really good at making sure we have the mana that we need to activate Livio because we need two white mana even though this deck is not very white heavy, we still need to make sure that we can activate Livio's ability a bunch. I'm also running Blossoming Sands, Fortified Village, Crosan Verge, which might I mention is really, really good when tutoring for two lands also lets us get two more lands from our hand on the battlefield. Really good. Razor Ridge Thicket, Reliquary Tower, Selesnya Sanctuary, Sungrass Prairie, Sun Petal Grove, and Temple of Plenty, along with 12 forests and 11 plains. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content and all of the rest of our content, make sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley. It supports us directly, lets us continue to make these videos, and you get a whole bunch of free perks. While I was building this deck, we were talking a storm about how good Kodama is, and if you want to be a part of those conversations, make sure you check out our Patreon. Thank you again to GameGrid for sponsoring this video and all of the videos on our channel. If you go through the affiliate link in the description, it will help the channel. Anything you buy there will support the channel a little bit. They should nationwide so you can get your card singles there go and check out all the commander legend stuff and make sure you pick up your kodama now we live stream on twitch every tuesday at 7 p.m mountain standard time join us for some brawl on arena and check out our links to our social media in the description below thank you guys i hope you enjoyed the deck and have a fantastic week